Should you be buying Ethereum right now? That is the biggest narrative in the crypto markets, of course, as the Ethereum merge is approaching. And the hype and anticipation of this event have caused Ethereum to outperform not just Bitcoin, as shown by the Ethereum to Bitcoin chart, but also the crypto markets as a whole, as shown by the Ethereum dominance chart. However, as we get closer to the merge actually taking place, people are starting to have more and more questions about different scenarios that may play out and other details. That is why today, in this video, I'm going to be covering some of the biggest questions and what-ifs people have about the merge. Those will include how proof-of-work forks by miners could affect Ethereum, what will happen if the merge does not go as planned, what will happen if it does go as planned, and whether or not the merge is already priced in. Before I get started with that, make sure to subscribe and activate the bell icon so you do not miss out on more videos like this, as well as everything else I post here on the channel. So. Let's start off with a quick timeline for reference. There are two primary events left to pay attention to, and those are the Gorli testnet merge and the mainnet merge itself. The merge of the Gorli and the Praetor testnets into a single proof of stake testnet is the last trial run prior to the mainnet merge, and it is scheduled for tomorrow, the 10th. Although it could happen slightly earlier or later due to a technical difference between testnet and mainnet that makes estimating the exact time of the upgrade more difficult. But if this merge goes as planned without any significant issues, then a date for the mainnet merge could be set as soon as this Friday during the Ethereum community call. For now though, we already have a tentative date, which is uh, sometime during the week of September the 19th, which is a bit more than a month away. With that in mind, let's move on to one of the more controversial topics related to the merge, and that is the proof of work forks. Right now, the Ethereum network is supported by miners who utilize hardware devices with GPUs. Over the past two years, miners have spent around $15 billion on GPUs alone. That doesn't include the costs of other hardware components, electricity, or the facilities that hold the mining rigs. When Ethereum switches to proof of stake, those miners will no longer serve a purpose for the network, leaving miners with a tough decision of whether to close down their operations or try to mine something other than Ethereum. Unfortunately, GPU mining rigs are not suitable to mine Bitcoin and no other proof of work chains need anywhere near as much hash power as there is from miners needing to relocate. This is what has led some miners to consider forking Ethereum to create a version that will continue utilizing proof of work after the main or real Ethereum transition to proof of stake. To be clear, there will almost certainly be at least one fork like this, if not more, and it is possible that they will differ slightly in how they are implemented, but the issues I'm trying to uh, cover apply to all of them. There are several major challenges that these forks will have to try to find solutions to if they are to succeed. First is that they need social support. As you probably know, the merge has been a hotly anticipated upgrade for years now and has the support of nearly the entire community of users, projects and developers. This is because it will cut Ethereum's energy consumption by over 99% and set the stage for future scalability upgrades. Because the merge has such a strong support, it will not be easy for miners to convince users to use their forked chain instead of the proof of stake chain, and without users and projects, the forked chain is unlikely to succeed and the Ethereum on it would not have any significant value, which would make mining it unprofitable. Another challenge for any forks would be that the core infrastructure of many projects is moving to the proof of stake chain. This includes Chainlink, which has issued a statement already clearly stating that proof of work forks will not be supported. With Chainlink being by far the most popular oracle and a key aspect of many protocols to access off chain data, any project using it on the fork chain would be left with major issues. Stablecoins are another key piece of the crypto ecosystem and the largest issuer. Tether of USDT has already stated that uh, they will be supporting the proof of stake chain. This means that all the different DeFi protocols using USDT or other stablecoins, which are also moving, will be left with stablecoins backed by nothing. As you can imagine, this would be a critical issue for DeFi protocols especially. With so many obstacles, you may be asking yourselves why miners would even bother trying to make a fork succeed. The answer to that may be, as Vitalik Buterin put it, to make a quick buck. Essentially, he thinks that miners are looking for a way to get a bit more money out of the Ethereum ecosystem before they have to move on. In reality, it 
isn't just miners looking to make some money from potential forks. Exchanges and short-term traders are also very interested. Several exchanges have already added support for turning regular Ethereum into proof-of-stake and proof-of-work versions and allow users to trade them against each other. Basically, you can deposit Ethereum and redeem one normal Ethereum into one Ethereum work and one Ethereum S. Then you can sell whichever you don't believe in. As you can see here on Poloniex, the proof-of-work Ethereum tokens are only trading at a small fraction of normal Ethereum because most people are just dumping it. While Poloniex actually has listed these markets with no trading fees, other exchanges are using the attention around proof-of-stake forks to get people to deposit more Ethereum and generate some extra trading volume. On the other hand, there are some entities and individuals who seem to actually believe in the potential success of a proof-of-work fork. Justin Sun, for example, has stated that he holds over 1 million Ethereum and will be donating some of the forked proof-of-work Ethereum he receives on the new chain to encourage the community and developers to build there. However, there is of course also the potential that he and others are trying to maximize the potential value of the proof-of-work Ethereum they receive for themselves as well. This is also a possibility for miners and other Ethereum whales as well. Just in case you have not experienced a fork before or are unaware of how they work, when a chain is forked you receive a duplicate of your balance on the new chain. If you hold Ethereum tokens or NFTs right now, you would have those on the forked chain as well. This means that for whales or miners who currently hold around 1 million Ethereum, there is the potential to make some serious profits if the forked Ethereum ends up being worth anything. While most of what I have covered so far is evidence that any forks will not succeed and will face many challenges, I do want to be clear that there is always the potential for these forked Ethereum coins to be worth something in the future, even if the chains do not see significant success. Using Bitcoin forks as an example, BCH is still worth around $2.7 billion and Bitcoin gold over half a billion dollars. And that is what they are worth years after the initial forks. Both of those coins are down over 90% from their all-time highs. The crypto markets can be highly irrational at times, so the potential for short squeezes or other random pumps in these coins is completely possible. Moving on, another big question people have is what if the merge does not go as planned? This is a real possibility, and while it would almost certainly cause a temporary decline in the price of Ethereum, it would not be a big deal in the long term. Depending on the severity of any issues, the merge could be delayed or the core Ethereum developers could simply work on a patch to any issues and add it in a separate upgrade. The main point is that whether it happens the week of September 19th or a bit later, Ethereum will be switching to proof of stake in the near future. While this drama with forks is a hot topic right now, it will likely be resolved in the next few months if not sooner. Finally, we have the question of whether or not the merge is already priced in. While the logical answer would be, of course, we have known about this for a while now, that is unlikely to actually be accurate. There are a few factors to consider. First, because of the bearish macro circumstances in the world, there are likely a significant amount of sidelined investors. Even if they know the merge is coming and it is a bullish event for Ethereum, they may be waiting for a sign of improved macro conditions before buying and positioning themselves. Second, we need to consider that the merge is not a single event that is bullish, but rather a fundamental change to Ethereum. Not only does it decrease energy usage, but also the rate at which new Ethereum enters circulation. With the burning of fees, Ethereum will likely be deflationary in the future, while now it has a yearly supply inflation of around 4.5%. As we've seen in the past with Bitcoin halvings, decrease in emissions can spark long-term bull markets and price increases. One last thing for you to consider is that while halvings decrease Bitcoin emissions by 50%, the merge will decrease daily Ethereum emissions from roughly 15,000 to only 1,500. I hope that you all enjoyed today's video and I will see you guys in the next one.